Hello everybody, welcome back to another Adobe Photoshop CC 2019 tutorial. This one, I'm going to show you how to create your own unique filter or filter type look using uh, fill gradient, so like a gradient layer. So let's just dig right into this and get the ball rolling. If you want to work along with me, I've just downloaded a stock image off of pexels.com. They've got thousands and thousands of free images and uh, just work along with me. But uh, the technique works no matter what. So let's dig right in. The first thing you want to do is make sure you're select on your layer. And now you want to go up to the top here. You want to go left click on layer, new fill layer, drag it across to gradient. Left click on that and you're going to see this pop up and you're going to call and it's going to say gradient fill. I'm going to call this uh, Insta Filter 1 because this is our first new gradient Insta Filter. Left click on OK and the first thing that happens is the default gradient fill or the last gradient fill depending on if you've used this before loads up. In a lot of cases you guys are going to be seeing the black to white gradient fill because that's the default one especially if you're newer but I've got the blue one here so this is one that I've been working with recently but again, it doesn't matter. Whatever one shows up is fine. I just want to walk you through the process. So go ahead. If you want to make some changes, let's go right in and left click on gradient right here. And when you left click on inside that box of the gradient, you're going to see all of the different presets. And I've got a bunch of presets, including some that I've snapped on. And more importantly, you're going to see the stops here. So you're going to see these four rectangles or these four little boxes. Well, here's the thing. If you double click or even just click, pardon me, double click, pardon me, on the different squares or the different boxes, you're going to notice here that you can change the color. I'm going to move that a little bit. So I double clicked on this square here and this is what showed up. Now, if it's default right now, selected to dark blue, but this is a pretty serious looking, um, pretty dark. So let's lower it. And as I lower the saturation, you're going to see that we're getting a much subtler look over here. And this isn't even the final copy because we've got to change the blend mode. But um, so anyways, the bottom line is to create a filter, you can go ahead and experiment with this. I'm going to go ahead and use the bluish color because uh, the blue is, is very, very common in like, you know, scary movies and stuff like that. So whatever, we've got this pretty girl in a hallway. We're going to make it a scary movie. But again, you guys can go down to red and orange or whatever the heck it is you guys are wanting to do all good we're creating our own filter i'm going back to the darker blue i'm going to desaturate that a little bit and go with that and then i'm going to left click on ok now the other thing you'll notice here is on the right side you've also got another box so i'm going to double click on this one as well and this one actually also happens to be selected at the darker end of the blue spectrum so i'm going to maybe add in for demonstration purposes i'm going to make this a little bit greener or cyan uh yeah a little bit more cyan -y, whatever you want to call it and I'm going to desaturate it a little bit. And again, this is a little bit bit rougher than you'd probably use in your own um, filters because there's a lot going on here. But again, that's not the point. The point is to demonstrate the technique. So now that I've added that in, let's just say I've got this lightish blue at the bottom. And I got this, you know, greeny magenta-ish. Well, not magenta, pardon me, but cyan. That's the color. Come on, Curtis. Uh, Cyanish at the right. I'm going to click on OK. And the next step is you can go ahead in here. You can change the style. I don't usually recommend it because they don't, they're not really filterish. Um, the reflected's okay, but um, really linear is the one you want to work with in almost all cases. And then I'm going to hit OK. And now this is not the end of it though. So just so you guys know, there's a big mistake that I used to make and I've seen a lot of other people make is you want to change the blend mode from normal even though this does look pretty nice if you change the blend mode blend mode down to color now take a look you'll see that the the darks and the the contrast is there we're in the previous blend mode in the regular one it's not really there in color color ignores the luminance this is a blend mode if you're not familiar with that so we've changed the blend mode to color we've added in our own gradient fill layer and now if it's too strong and you're like hey you know that looks really really good but it's just a bit too strong we can dial down the opacity to taste so let's go to zero percent nothing's happening right obviously but as we increase the opacity and let the old processor catch up you're going to see here that as we go up and up and up we're getting a more gradual effect so let's say that's the effect we go for this 
is awesome. This is a filter that I might even use, especially if I was doing black and white photography, with adding in some tints, and literally that's all there is to it. There are so many different ways inside Photoshop to get your own look. This is another one. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, guys. I got a lot more stuff coming up. Be back soon.